Hi friends, Father Carey here, and this is another Holy Spirit moment. This one with a tip from the 20th century philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein on how to talk about God. Ordinarily, we human beings crave orderliness in our discourse, don't we? Whenever we talk about a subject, we want to talk about it clearly and distinctly. And then whenever we approach a problem, we want a clean and quick solution to that problem. We want clean edges in both the way in which we talk and the way in which we think and the way in which we solve problems. We dislike a lack of clarity. We dislike ambiguity. We dislike uncertainty. We dislike fuzziness. Now, I think that's a strength in many, many ways, but where it is not a strength, I want to suggest to you, is when we discourse about God. Our discourse about God inevitably is going to be ambiguous. It inevitably is going to be ragged. It won't have clean edges. Now, back to the philosopher Wittgenstein, whom I mentioned just a few moments ago. Wittgenstein, you may know, was a philosopher who early in his career wanted to come up with a language that would eliminate all ambiguity. And his solution was to transform language into logic. But later in life, he had a change of heart. He realized that if we tried to eliminate ambiguity from language, from our discourse, then we would lose a lot of value. And he came to the conclusion that a bit of sloppiness in our language is quite okay. That ambiguity is not a vice. That ambiguity, as a matter of fact, can be an advantage, especially in certain kinds of discourse. In a notebook of his that was published after his death, we find the line, quote, the ragged must be left ragged. Discourse which has ragged edges, must not be snipped away artificially in order to make those borders clean, because to do so is to do violence to the discourse and to the topic that the discourse is trying to describe. I think that all God talk is ragged in that way and ought to be left ragged. We have a tendency, don't we, to want to classify, to categorize, to uh, domesticate God because we don't like ambiguity. We don't like uncertainty. Some of us, for instance, may become fundamentalists. We may read the Bible and we may say to ourselves, that is exactly and only what God is. And in so doing, we try to snip away the ragged edges about discourse when it comes to God. Or others of us may be systematic theologians. And so what we do is to make God into an abstract entity in which we can once again snip away all of the ragged experiential edges until we have a clean and pristine logical solution to the problem of God. Don't misunderstand me. There is value in systematic theology and there is certainly value in reading scripture but not if we insist that either of those two enterprises is going to nail down God for us. No, God can't be nailed down through our speech, through our discourse, or even through our thoughts. And the reason for that is that God is essentially incomprehensible. Now, it's not just I who am saying that. Thomas Aquinas, back in the 13th century, no one's intellectual slouch insisted upon the incomprehensibility of God. Thomas said, and I think he's absolutely correct about this, that we can know some things about God through reason. We can, for example, know that there is a God. And we can know other things about God through revelation. We can know in the Christian context that God is Trinitarian. But what we can never know is God in and of God's self. We can never comprehend, go completely around God. Our minds just aren't capable of that. Our intellects are finite and God is infinite. In fact, Thomas Aquinas went so far as to say, not only will you and I never comprehend God in this life, we won't even comprehend God in the next life. The beatific vision will not be a comprehensive going around of God, because even on the other side of the grave, our intellects will remain finite. 
If we keep that in mind, my friends, the incomprehensibility of God, we leave room for wonder and awe. If we recognize that our religious beliefs are always precarious, that is, they are always teetering on the edge, we can never nail them down, then we will open ourselves to an experience like Moses had before the burning bush, or an experience like Moses had on Mount Sinai. I think here of the distinction that the Catholic philosopher Gabriel Marcel made between problem on the one hand and mystery on the other. A problem is a riddle that can be solved. All we need is enough brain power and enough information, and the problem can be solved in a neat, clean, unambiguous, clean-edged way. But a mystery is not a problem. A mystery is a darkness in experience that beckons to us, that invites us to enter into it. When, when we enter into it, it's not that we do so in a comprehending kind of way, but we do so in an experiential way that enriches and winds us. We may not be able to speak that experience in a satisfying way, but we live the experience in a satisfying way. The problem with wanting to snip away the ragged edges of our discourse about God is that we turn the mystery of God into a problem, and in so doing, we distort God. There's a line from Flannery O'Connor's novel, Wise Blood, that I'm really quite fond of and that I want to close with. O'Connor says that she imagines Jesus as that enigmatic figure flitting through the trees in the back of her mind. Jesus is that enigmatic figure flitting through the trees in the back of her mind. She catches glimpses of Jesus, but she never stares at Jesus full on. We get glimpses of God, the mystery of God, the awe-inspiring creator of all that is, but we never face God one-on-one, on one because we're simply not capable of it. And that means that our discourse can never perfectly describe God. And that means that our discourse always must be ragged around the edges. It's something that we should celebrate, not deplore. Friends, I'm Father Kerry, and this has been another Holy Spirit moment. Thanks so much for watching. If you are of a mind, I invite you to subscribe to this series. At any rate, thank you. I'll see you again next time. God bless.